I first came to Africa in 1967, and I was on a, on a trip. Uh, I was a tourist, and I traveled with a friend uh, from New York. That's where we were both from, and I, we were both working for Newsweek magazine. I took a safari. In fact, Amboseli was where I first saw an elephant. I was lucky enough to have been given an introduction to somebody who was studying elephants in Lake Manyara National Park, and that was Ian Douglas Hamilton. I went back down later uh, after my trip was over and volunteered for him for three weeks, and that's when I really fell in love with elephants. It was just amazing because he knew them individually, and that's what really captured my heart, you know, just following the lives of individual animals. All I wanted to do from that point on was to study elephants. And that wasn't easy because I didn't have a degree in science. I had a degree in philosophy, so I had to uh, become a scientist. I kept looking for places to do elephant work. And I uh, finally was invited by David Western to come and look at Amboseli and see, because he thought it was a good idea to do a, a study of the elephants there. So he invited Harvey Crows and myself to come down to Amboseli on September 1st, 1972. And that is the day we started the Amboseli Elephant Research Project. Harvey and I felt that it was a really important place to study elephants because the elephants were relatively undisturbed. They were about as natural a population as you could find. Many parts of Africa at that time had what people thought were too many elephants. And they were all being forced into national parks and other protected areas, and they were fenced in or forced in through activities going around outside. Where Amboseli, although the park was very small, the ecosystem over which all the animals roamed was very large. They were still using migration routes that they'd been using for four or five hundred years. What we wanted to do was to study a natural population and get baseline information on what elephants do under those kinds of circumstances. To be able to help elephants in other parts of Africa, to be able to make conservation decisions about uh, what's the most important thing for them. And, uh, and so that's why we chose Amboseli. I never thought it was going to be a long, long, long-term study the way it has become. Years went by. <laughs> And that was probably the crucial point, maybe 1978, to decide whether this is going to be my life. And of course it, it was. By that time I knew all the elephants individually. They were all, you know, I was so invested in their lives and what happened to them that uh, there was no way I could think about leaving them at, at that point. So that's when I decided this was going to be a, for as long as I could do it. The biggest contribution is Providing this data that is so crucial on a baseline population, and it's being used all over the world. My name is Phyllis Lee, and I am the Director of Science for the Amboseli Trust for Elephants, and I have been working with the elephants in Amboseli and Cynthia and the project since 1982. Elephants are, are important to study right now because they're so highly threatened by poaching for ivory that if we don't actually understand the consequences of humans' actions on elephants, we probably won't have any elephants left for either our children or our grandchildren. Long-term studies are some of the most difficult and at the same time most interesting kinds of research that any biologist can do. We look at individuals and we track an individual from birth until death, if we possibly can. With elephants that's a very, very long time because it could be as long as 65 to 70 years. So these very long-term studies are extremely important because they're the only way we get a portrait of an individual's changes over a lifespan and how they develop, how they grow, how they reproduce, and how they die. And that's the aim of this project, is to be able to use that information on individuals to develop population models, to develop conservation protocols, and to understand the biology of a very long-lived species like the elephant. I think what we were able to do was was really show people what elephants are, how they're so complex and so intelligent, because our studies of 
social behavior and cognition have shown really amazing revelations. That's made a big difference to people's perception of elephants. They're not just these big animals walking around the ecosystem eating everything. They have families, they have lives, they have emotions. And that's changed people's attitudes toward elephants. And certainly it's had a big impact in the way elephants are treated in captivity. So our studies have, have had a big impact on the captive world as well as the, the wild world. Elephants are facing a huge number of challenges right now. Their environments are being dissected by human activities. They're becoming isolated in fragments of forests. They're surrounded by farmland. People are universally hostile to them when they have to live with elephants. Our problem now is to understand enough about elephant cognition and communication and responses to humans and to the changes that humans are making in their environments to enable both humans and elephants to tolerate each other, what we call sharing space between elephants and humans. If we can't do that and protect them from poaching, we won't have any elephants in the future. So we may never completely understand the elephant, but we will understand a great deal more about his or her needs and his or her behavior in the kind of human-dominated world that they now live in. Conservation nowadays is a very complicated question. If we just want to conserve a species, we could just plunk them in a tiny little corner of the world and put a fence around it. But what we can't then actually conserve the entire ecosystem that goes with that species. If you take elephants out of any area, the area will change. Its flora and fauna will change. It will be completely different from the place it was when it had elephants. Understanding the demography of any species is incredibly important for being able to predict what will happen to populations when populations are seriously challenged by death or by human destruction. Our conservation contributions have been in the form of, of understanding the population demography and also understanding how elephants communicate with each other and how they move through a human-dominated world and how they avoid risk from humans. The Ambicelli project isn't just a research project, and it really never was, although maybe in the early days it concentrated on the research. But from the very beginning, I knew that there was no future for the Ambicelli elephants without the cooperation of the local community. Because that park is so small and the ecosystem is so important to the elephant, and the Maasai people are the people who live on that land. It's absolutely essential that they continue to host all of the wildlife. And so it had to be made worthwhile to the Maasai. And so we've always been very aware of that and concerned about that. Aside from our research, ATE runs various projects in order to promote positive relationships between humans and elephants. We have a consolation project for the Maasai community members who have lost their livestock to elephants. Ambuseli Trust for Elephants started to pay the consolation fee since 1997. And we normally pay sheep, goat, donkey, and cow. The idea for AT started because when an elephant kills a cow or a sheep, you see the Maasai kind of pay back. They spear an elephant because they lost their cow. But since that time, they all come down. The money we pay them, it is really helped because immediately they just say, I'll go and buy another cow or I buy another sheep. Since that time up to now, the spearing really went down. We also run a student scholarship project in order to support young Maasai from the Ambicelli ecosystem through both high school and university. AT also has a training program for people from all over Africa working in elephant conservation. In order to raise global awareness, I have written numerous books and made several films. I believe these films and books have touched people's heart on a worldwide scale. ATE is a relatively small project, but our reach extends far and wide. We have a small team in Kenya and are a registered charity in the U.S. We rely entirely on donations from the global public, and this is where each and every person can help and support our work. 
An important role that ATE plays is as advocates for elephants. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think of ourselves as the defense lawyers even for elephants, especially in, in cases where they've maybe uh, a, a cow has been killed or there's crops being raided, then somebody has to defend them, you know. So we have to try to make people see you know, who elephants are and what elephants are.